Good morning, class. We're going to do a problem right now on something called cost inference. So the idea here is that if you know certain costs that a firm has, you can identify other costs that must hold true. And the key principle here is that you need to know how all the different costs that a firm has are related to one another. All right, so let's just jump right into the problem here, and you guys will see what I mean. So take a look at the board here behind me. You can see that I've set up um, a table where we can introduce all the costs that a firm might have. I've used some notation here, so why don't I start by uh, making clear all the, the shorthand that I'm using. So starting over here on this end of the board, we've got the quantity that the firm is going to produce. That can be either zero units, one unit, two, three, or four units. FC, this is going to represent their fixed costs at all different levels of output. The VC that we've got next, that stands for variable cost. Next up, we have TC, that represents total cost. Next one, MC, this is for marginal cost. And then finally, these last three over here, these are the family uh, or the group of per unit costs. Average total cost, AATC, average fixed cost, AFC, an average variable cost, ABC. All right, so a lot of problems are set up. Like I said, you'll be given some of these, and then you've got to figure out the rest. And the key right, that you're going to have to use is you have to know how these costs fit together. Um, so we're going to be using essentially some algebra here, some, some simple problem solving. So let's start uh, by taking the information that's given to us and see what sort of conclusions that we can draw. One of the things I like to do to begin with is to find the firm's fixed costs as quickly as I can. And the reason for that is because, of course, fixed costs represent all those costs that don't change as output changes. They're fixed, so they just stay locked in place. So this is going to be costs on things like rent and stuff like that. Take a look at our table. We can see that this is telling us when the firm produces four units, they're going to have a fixed cost of $1,000. And if they're fixed, that means that they don't change regardless of what output they're producing. So when they produce three, they're going to have a fixed cost of $1,000. And when they're producing two and one, and even when they're producing zero units, they still have to pay those fixed costs. So that's super helpful. We can fill in the fixed costs for all different levels of output because the definition of a fixed cost tells us that this won't change. Excellent. So that's one piece of uh, information we can use. We're on our way. After finding the fixed costs, another thing that I like to do is start at the top and then work my way down these types of tables. Um, you don't have to do that. You can start wherever you want, but I'm going to use, of course, the practice that makes the most sense to me. So looking at our table now, we've got blanks here for the variable cost when the firm is producing zero, and the total cost. A couple things we want to rely on. First up, whenever firms are producing zero units, they're not making anything, for sure they're going to have zero as their variable cost. Right? And the reason for that is because variable costs are going to be the cost for things like paying workers, uh, buying materials, uh, things of this nature. These are the costs where they go up as you're producing more stuff. So if you're not making anything, you don't have to pay workers, you don't need to buy materials and so on. So the variable cost must be zero when the output is zero. We can put that there. And then lastly, we want to recognize that all the costs that a firm has are going to either be fixed costs or variable costs. Uh, in other words, total cost is simply the sum of fixed and variable cost. Let's put that over here. Total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost. So we know that to be true, and you're going to get a lot of usage out of that. So for example, right here when the firm is producing zero units, we have their fixed cost, we have their variable cost, totals the sum of the two, we just add them together to get a total cost of $1,000 when the firm is producing zero units. So boom, we're done, my check mark, we're done with that top row. Right, moving down to the next row, we want to take the information that's provided to us along with what sort of cost relationships we know to be factually true. So now they're telling us the average total cost is 1300 bucks, right? So we're think about how does average total cost relate to some other ones? Well, one thing that should be um, 
one, one thing that you should recognize, the bell that should be going off in your head right now is that total cost and average total cost connect, right? It's always the case that the average total cost is simply total cost divided by quantity, right? However, whatever the cost that the firm has overall for making all the units divided by the number of units that they produce leaves you with their per unit cost. So we have then quantity, which is one, we have the average total cost, which is 13, uh, 1300. So 1300 divided by the quantity of one, just plugging it into, I'm sorry, 1300 times the quantity of one would give us a total cost of 1300 bucks per year as well. And then now that we have this extra information, the table becomes easier to fill in. Right now, for example, we can see the variable cost when the firm is producing one unit, right? Using these two numbers right here, right? It's telling us their overall cost is 1,300 bucks. Of that, 1,000 are the fixed costs, so the remainder, the difference between the two, must be the variable costs, 300 bucks, which gives us, again, that result here, that fixed plus variable gives us total cost. Go. So that's the kind of uh, thought process you're going to use throughout the table. Let's keep it moving. Next up, we have the MC here. Right? Remember, MC stands for marginal cost. Uh, marginal cost is one where we're trying to figure out how much more it costs this business to make that last unit. Okay? So what you really want to focus on for getting the marginal cost is the difference in your total cost column. Right, so this is telling us to produce zero units costs this business $1,000. To produce one unit costs $1,300. The extra cost then that's associated with only the first unit is the difference between these two. It costs them $300 more to produce one unit rather than zero. So $300 is therefore the marginal cost of the first unit, just $1,300 minus $1,000. Almost done with this row. Next up, we got to get the average fixed cost. Right? We have the firm's fixed cost, and we have their quantity. We can use that to get their average fix because we know average fixed cost is equal to simply fixed cost over quantity. So all these different cost relationships that uh, you're going to encounter in the textbook are important. You got to know how they fit together. All right. So we're just going to take the one thousand dollars of fixed cost divided by quantity of two to get an average fixed cost there of 500 bucks. So that should go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumped down the road. We're still on this row right here, sorry about that. The average fixed cost when producing one unit is $1,000 of fixed cost divided by quantity of one. So this must be 1,000. I'm getting ahead of myself. Last step on this row here is to get this average variable cost when the business is making one unit. To find that, take the variable cost and divide it by the quantity. Average variable cost is variable cost divided by quantity. So 300 divided by one, of course, gives us 300. So we're good to go, another row now. Let's keep it moving. Next row, uh, we have a quantity here of two that's given to us. We have their fixed cost and we have the variable cost. I bet you guys see it, how we can use these two, right? Same logic we were doing before. We could sum those up to get this business's total cost, right? Because of that relationship that we've been working on time and time again. Therefore, the total cost that goes with making two units would be 15, 50. 1,000 plus 550. All right. Our marginal cost, right? Remember, whenever you see marginal, you're thinking about the extra of something, extra benefit, extra cost. In this case, it's the extra cost that goes with only making the second unit rather than producing two overall. How much more does it cost when they go from one to two units? So you just compare these two right here. Total cost increased by $250. That's 1550 minus the 1300. So 250 is what we want right there for our marginal cost of unit number two. We're getting there. 
average total cost, when they're making two units, you want to take the total cost and the quantity to get that average total cost. Okay, so 1550 divided by two, if I'm doing this right, that should be 775. The average fixed cost. In order to get this, we're going to take the fixed cost, divide it by the quantity. So now we're looking at the 1,000 and that quantity of 2. So this must be 500. We got it. And then last step, the average variable cost. We take the variable cost, divide it by the quantity. So 550 divided by the quantity of 2 would give us then 270. One way that you can check to make sure that you're doing all this properly is to ensure that these three uh, fit together as they should as well. Average total cost is going to be equal to the sum of these two, right? So 1,000 added to, to 300 gives you the 1,300. 500 added to the 275 gives us this 275. Everything should be linking up like that. All right, on to our next row. Now the firm's producing three units. The information that's given to us here is the marginal cost is 200 bucks, right? So again, all that means is that this total cost rises by 200 when they make the third unit. So the total cost now must be 1750. Just adding the 1550 with the additional 200, right? And then once you have that, it becomes easier. Next, we could figure out the variable cost, right? There would be the difference between fixed and total cost. So this must be 750 if I'm doing that properly. 1,000 plus 750 more gives us the 1750. Uh, let's see, the average total cost when we're producing these down a little bit. I'm getting my rows mixed up here. This is gonna go this, this. So this was 1750 here. This was the 750. Average total cost that we get when we're making three units, that's going to be the 1750, the total cost, divided by the quantity of three. And I don't think I'm going to do that in my head. That's going to come to 583.3. The average fixed cost is going to be the fixed cost of 1,000 divided by now the quantity of three. That one I will do in my head. 333 and a third. And then last up, the average variable cost. Take the variable cost of 750 divided by the quantity, and you get there 250. All right, almost done. We've got one more row on the bottom row. The info that's given is that average variable cost is 225. So we can use the average variable cost along with the quantity that's being made to figure out the overall variable cost by just multiplying them. Right? 225 times 4 is going to give us a variable cost of 900 bucks. So let's go right there. Meaning that the total cost is going to be 1900. The marginal cost is the difference between these two, 1750 and 1900, so that's 150 bucks more for our marginal cost. The average total cost is going to be the 1900 divided by the 4, and that's going to give us an average total cost of 475. And then our very last one, I bet you guys are glad this is over with by now, is going to be our fixed cost of 1000 divided by this quantity of 4, or 250. And voila, we've done the whole entire thing just like that. Again, I want to stress principles here are that you have to know how these costs fit together. Uh, for example, total cost is fixed plus variable and all these average cost measures are put together as well as marginal cost. Know those facts to be true and then in addition to that, take the information that's given associated with each particular quantity. Right? For every quantity here, uh, nearly every quantity here, you're given a particular number on that row. That's something that you're going to have to make use of to figure out other types 
of costs. All right, so involve stuff, but once you have gone through this and learned the practice, not so terrible. There you go.